My name's Mary, and I'm coming to you from the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And today, we're going to talk about an octopus. Not just any octopus, Inky. Now, I bet a lot of you have a dog or a cat, and you think they're pretty smart. They can do tricks, and they can do different things. And there are a lot of animals out there that are very smart. But this particular octopus is very smart. And in fact, this is a true story that I'm going to tell you. And then I'll tell you a few facts about octopi or octopuses at the end. This book is, <coughs> excuse me, Inky's Amazing Escape. How? A very smart octopus found his way home. The book is by Cy Montgomery. And the illustrations are by Amy Schimler Safford. This particular book is <coughs> published by Simon & Schuster Books. It's a Paula Wiseman book. The baby octopus hatched out of an egg the size of a grain of rice. His mother used her jet to blow him from her den out to the sea, along with his tiny octopus brothers and sisters. Each octopus set out on a journey alone. They're born ready to explore. For weeks, the octopus rode the currents of the Pacific Ocean. He ate tiny scraps of food that floated by, and he grew fast. Soon he needed bigger meals, clams, fish, and octopus's favorite crabs. To find them, the little octopus had to explore. Curious, he wondered. Might there be a tasty morsel here? What about over there? He poked his slippery, bendy arms into every nook and cranny. Soon he found a yummy clam. He used his strong suckers to pull the clam apart and ate the clam for dinner. Now the octopus was sleepy. How would he find a safe place to nap? He searched among the coral. He found a crack that led to a little cave. In went one arm, two arms, four arms, eight. Good night. In the morning, the octopus again went exploring. What would he find today? He could both feel and taste with his suckers. But he didn't see the long green fish swimming like a banner, rippling in the wind. It was a moray eel. He chomped down on two of the octopus's arms. The young octopus used his jet to shoot away, head first, arms trailing behind. But the eel had bitten off the tips of two arms. The octopus was hungry and hurt. But he went on. The octopus spotted a wooden box lying on the seafloor. In went his slippery bendy arms. In went his squishy head. He ate the lobster. Then he took a nap. Woken from sleep, the octopus felt himself rising up and out of the water. What the octopus thought was a safe den was a fisherman's lobster trap. You aren't a lobster, the fisherman exclaimed. Who do we have here? The octopus, who had never seen a human before, wondered the same. Thing. You're hurt, 
the lobsterman observed. He decided to take the little octopus to the aquarium. The aquarium keeper saw the octopus's hurt arms. You be safe with us, she told the octopus and poured him into a tank. She named him Inky because when they're scared, octopuses can squirt ink. But the little octopus wasn't scared. He was ready to explore. He felt and tasted the glass in all the corners with his slippery, bendy arms and his strong suckers. He crawled to the top of the tank and looked up at the keeper. She handed him his favorite snack, a yummy crab. Now they were friends. Inky liked it when the keeper petted him. Sometimes he was so happy he would change color. Octopuses change color to fool prey and escape enemies, but they show their feelings this way too. When the keeper opened the lid to his tank, Inky turned red with excitement. When he relaxed, he turned white. Sometimes he made spots on his arms. Sometimes he sprouted stripes and blotches. Inky felt better. He had fun in his tank. The keeper gave him dried corals, pots, and jars to explore. Inky poked his slippery, bendy arms into all of them. Sometimes he'd squeeze his squishy head inside. Sometimes the keeper gave him, gave Inky toys. Inky liked to take apart Lego blocks and put them back together. He liked playing with Mr. Potato Head. One time with his suckers, he pulled off Mr. Potato Head's eyes and handed them to the starfish in his tank. Inky grew very fast. When he arrived at the aquarium, he was the size of a baseball, but he was now the size of a soccer ball. His arms had healed. Inky was always exploring. One night, the keeper forgot to close the lid to Inky's tank tightly enough. He poked a slippery, bendy arm through the gap. What would he find? First one arm, then another, and another, then all eight arms climbed out of the tank. Finally, his squishy head was out too. S Inky slid along the floor, exploring with his arms. Soon he came to a hole, a drain for the water, always slopping out of aquarium tanks and hoses. Where would the hole lead? There was only one way to find out. He poked his slippery, bendy arms into the drain. One arm, two arms, four arms, eight. He pulled and pushed, he pushed and pulled, and finally his squishy head popped inside the drain too. goes. Inky traveled a long way, down, down, and down, and Inky inched his way through the long pipe. At last, he could feel and taste a change. Out popped one arm, two arms, four arms, eight, and finally Inky's squishy head was free again. The drain pipe ran right back into the Pacific Ocean. And that's where Inky is today, still ready to explore. Now, Inky 
was a real octopus. The lobstermen who caught him off New Zealand's shallow reefs donated him to the National Aquarium in Wellington. Inky's nighttime escape down the drain and back to the sea in 2016 was reported in newspapers around the world. Octopuses are fabulous escape artists. They have only one hard part in the body, the beak, and can squeeze through any opening big enough to fit it. That's how Inky, big as a soccer ball, could squeeze through a drain pipe that was only six inches wide. Their muscles are less like our biceps and more like our tongues. You can stick your tongue part way into the neck of a bottle, but couldn't do it with your bicep, even if you could detach it from your arm bone. Slime covering the skin makes the octopus slippery. It also keeps its skin moist during short overland excursions. Suckers on the arms help propel the animal across any surface, wet or dry. There are many stories about octopuses that have left their tanks to go exploring. One story goes like this. At Brighton, England's public aquarium, staffers noticed fish disappearing from the tank next to the one housing their octopus. What happened? Where did the fish go? It remained a mystery until one morning they found the octopus in the lump fish tank. Apparently, the octopus had been escaping each night to feed on his neighbors and returning to his own tank before people could find out. Because they lack bones, octopuses can squeeze through unbelievably small openings. A collector, searching for specimens for the American Museum of Natural History, once caught a foot-long octopus in Puerto Rico. He secured the octopus in a cigar box. He hammered the lid down with tacks. He wound a cord around the box tightly. But when he went to open the box again, it was empty. He found the octopus later in the water in the bottom of the boat, hiding near an oar. Certainly that octopus didn't want to live in a cigar box with no water. But what about other octopuses in captivity? Are they unhappy in public aquariums? Did Inky escape to regain his freedom? Was he lonely? Inky was probably very happy at in his tank at the aquarium. He had plenty to do. He wasn't bored. He wasn't lonely. Most species of octopus are solitary anyway. Even when it comes time for mating, there's always a danger. One will eat the other. Then why might Inky and these other octopuses escape? The answer's simple, because they're curious. Octopuses love to explore. After all, Christopher Columbus didn't set sail across the ocean because he didn't like Spain. Astronauts don't go to outer state space because they don't like Earth. And some species of octopus are known to sometimes purposely leave the shallows of the ocean and crawl out on land for a little while. That's not because they don't like water. Even though you don't look much like an octopus, you're probably alike in some ways. And this is one of them. Both of you are smart, curious creatures, eager to discover what else is out there. Now, at the back of the book, they have some fun octopus facts. So I'll share just a couple with you. And then some other time, you might want to come to the library and pick up a copy 
of Inky's amazing escape. There are more than 250 different kinds of octopus. One kind, the star sucker pygmy octopus, is so small that a grown-up one would fit on your fingertip. The largest, the giant Pacific octopus, can grow to 300 pounds. Inky was a common New Zealand octopus. Yum! An octopus can taste with his skin, even his eyelids. But the sense of taste is most developed in the suckers on the inside of his arms. If a predator bites off part of an octopus's arm, or even the entire arm, the octopus can regrow it like new. So there are other fun facts about octopus at the back of the book. And then there's some further reading if you really got excited about octopuses hearing about Inky. Let me show you right here. This was taken at the National Aquarium of New Zealand. This is the real Inky. So, I hope you enjoyed our reading today. That was Inky's Amazing Escape. How a Very Smart Octopus Found His Way Home. It was written by Cy Montgomery and illustrated by Amy Schimler Safford. The book is published by Simon and & Schuster and it was published in 2018. So I hope you learned a little bit about octopus today and I hope you'll be back again when we'll be talking about some other fun facts. So until next time, I'm Mary from the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I hope you'll be joining us again soon.